So this recording would be will be little different from my previous recordings. Here I will do uh, some on the fly exploration. So I might make some mistakes and uh, might have to um, fix something. So it will take some time. Uh, but I thought it it is a better way to uh, learn. Um, and also show the mistakes that are But what we are going to explore today is LangMAM. LangMAM is one of the newer innovations from LangChain, which focuses on long-term memory. And uh, this is uh, an area I am also spending a lot of time now and uh, very, very passionate about this uh, memory architecture because I believe that over a period of time, compute will 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 not be able to scale it will actually make the rag based or genii based applications expensive with uh, high latency so memory architecture will um, complement will act as a complementary feature by which we can reduce latency reduce cost and bring in more determinism in the way we interact with uh, the chatbots. And I'm actually not uh, like, why I uh, believe this? Because um, human brain is actually a memory engine, not a compute engine. That's why we are so efficient, right? So efficiently with, with very little effort, right? We can answer questions and all, right? So, um, yeah, so memory uh, uh, will be one of the very important subsystem of the genii based uh, system. Now, this uh, LangMAM, so this is the SDK, LangMAM SDK. The LangMAM gives your chatbot long-term memory so it can personalize its interactions to each user and environment. Now, this is not available to all users right now. It is in early alpha. And thanks to Will and the LangChain team, I when I requested for access, my access was approved for exploring this module, right? So this is uh, how you install it. You install LangMAM. This is the API URL, API key. This is what I got uh, access to. Uh, so, how, so while doing the conversation with the bot, uh, the add messages is the function that lang client exposes through which you can store your um, the interactions into the long term memory now as you store it automatically or eventually it, it gets into the long term memory but if you want it to be immediately updated in the long term memory you do the trigger all for thread now when you want to bring back the memory use the query user memory function of the lang client where you give the user id right and then you you can uh, get the memory back and uh, concatenate it with your query and then uh, chat with the uh, bot right on the concepts langmam organizes conversation into threads where each thread contains a list of messages with the content role and optional user information as the app developer, you can configure different memory types based on your need. Uh, there are three memory types, actually. User state, a structured profile that LangMem maintains for each, uh, each user. This is like the character graph, right, where it stores the uh, preferences, the interactions of the user so that this can be used in subsequent chats. Then the semantic memory, an unstructured memory that generates knowledge triplets from conversations. It can be queried based on um, relevance, importance, and recency. And then the append-only state, a hybrid of the above two memory types that allows you to customize the memory schema while still retrieving based on the re relevancy and recency. Right? And as I mentioned, this is still in early alpha. So let me go to the code now. I have written some part of the code. We will uh, make some changes um, as we go ahead. So the code, um, 
I have the Langmem API URL. I have the Langmem API key. Uh, I just uh, used Langs uh, Langsmith just to see how uh, the traces, the, how, how it flows, right? When I uh, use the long-term memory. Now, how I have uh, coded this for that, let me go to the main entry point. So this is my main where I have uh, create a thread ID. I create a user ID, right? And then I instantiate my memory bot class and call the memchat uh, function within the memory bot class. Um, and this is my question, right? So let me go to the memchat. In the memchat, I call the get messages function, which uh, tries to get the messages, uh, previous messages, uh, like if I'm doing a conversation, right? Um, uh, in, in this thread, what are the previous messages? I, I get this, but when I initially um, ask the question, it will be empty, right? So those, after I get the message, I append my new, um, new question here, right? Because in the mem chat, I'm passing the text, right? And in the metadata, I pass the user ID. Then I format the prompt. Now in the formatting prompt, what I do is, I call the, I, uh, so this is my system prompt, right? And I query my memory. This is where I'm querying my long-term memory. So if I have previous interactions of the user stored, I add it to the system prompt, right? And then uh, in the system prompt, I, I um, the, the actual system prompt, right? So if you, a system prompt plus the, uh, a previous interaction. So if you see here, what I, I do is in the query memory, I call the query user memory of the LAN client, passing the user ID, get the memories and format the memories, add the memory here, below are memories from past interactions, end of memories. This is what gets concatenated in the system prompt, right? What was the system prompt? This was the system prompt. So after this, the below are the memories gets concatenated and the format prompt, right? I get the prompt. This is the prompt now I send to uh, Claude and get the response, right? I, I, and then I add this message back to the memory. Now, right, that is the, whatever messages I got, I add it back to the memory, right? Now, uh, let me go back to the main. So once I get the mem result, I trigger the memory updation. I say trigger all for thread. If I don't do it, it will eventually update the long-term memory. Uh, when I do it, like it will immediately do it, do it, right? So let me try with this um, question and see how it gets into the memory, right? So let me, and we'll record the thread ID and the user ID. So let me run this. Let me copy the thread ID and the user ID. It will take some time. It is calling Claude, uh, Anthropic Claude, to get the information. So after this, okay, so it is done now. So now let, I wrote a query memory also. So let me, okay, so let me comment this out. We'll query the memory and see what's stored in the memory. So the user ID that we had was this, right? And if I give this user ID, I will just pass this user ID. And we will see, we will just say text equal to hello, right? So what I'm doing, I don't need this also for now. So what I'm doing is I'm creating a client, Langmem client. This is my user ID that we just used, right? And the mem result query user memory. Let's look at the, what it prints, right? So if you see memories, 
this is one memory it has created. Last text, right? And what it so text Rajiv is named Rajiv. Uh, I don't know why it is saying Rajiv is named Rajiv, but it captured this as a memory. And then it captured that the subject, and this is the user state, right? User state memory. The subject is Rajiv, is named Rajiv's recency 0.5, importance 0.5, right? That's all it captured, right? Now, if I if I go back here and let me hard code the user ID now and instead of creating another user ID, right? And let me ask, hi. What was my name? And we'll do one more thing. The prompt in the format prompt. Let's also after this, right? Let me print the formatted prompt, right? Formatted. Prompt, right? And then we'll run this. So since I'm giving the user ID, it should actually fetch the previous memory and should be able to answer this, right? Let me run this. This is a new thread ID, okay? The formatted prompt, see, it got this. And see, it is saying, based on the memories provided, your name is Rajiv, right? So my response is your name is so it is able to remember my name, right? So this is good. So this is also now. Uh, so the, here I just wanted to show how the uh, long term memory works. The next recording I am going to convert it into a conversational agent where I will we'll do multiple conversations in a thread, and then see how it works. Right for now, uh, that's it. Thank you.